We're at what we believe is the first bi-directional charger install on a residential or commercial property in Australia, and we're at Ballycroft Wines in the beautiful Barossa Valley here in South Australia. Now, if you're chomping at the bit to get bi-directional charging at your home or commercial property, there's three things you need to line up. One, you need a car that's capable of V to G. So this is a Nissan Leaf Gen 2. That's one of the few electric cars in Australia that can do that. Secondly, you need a bi-directional charger like this Wallbox Quasar. There's another one in Australia that we know, which is the Delta V2X. And these babies start at about $10,000 plus installation. And the third thing you need, which is probably the hardest, is you need permission from your local electricity network to connect the whole shebang to the grid. Now Joseph, he engaged Jet Charge, who's the distributor of the wall box, and they worked with SA Power Networks to get permission and line up all the technical stuff, and it took three years to get that permission. So let's now talk to the owner, Joseph, who's had this all installed for only three months, about why he bought it, what it cost, and how it's going. Joseph's claim to fame, apart from having the best wine in Australia, is, tell me if I'm wrong, you've got the only vehicle-to-grid charger installed in South Australia. Uh, that's correct, and uh, uh, we installed it about um, three months ago. SA Power Network uh, in South Australia is the first network to have it approved, is the reason we are one of the first, uh, which is, great for South Australia. Okay, so let's go through some technical specs. The Nissan Leaf Gen 2 has a 40 kilowatt hour battery in it. Uh, our, our car has a 40 kilowatt battery. You can now purchase a 65 kilowatt um, Nissan at, okay. at the moment, but ours is 40 kilowatt. And the, this is a Quasar, a Wallbox Quasar bi-directional charger. Yep. This um, will charge and discharge at seven kilowatts? At, at pretty much 7.2 kilowatts, you can charge the car through the Chatamo plug and discharge at a maximum of 7.2 kilowatts and at a minimum of about 1.2 kilowatts. So that's really important for people to realise, there is a minimum discharge from the car. Yes, that's correct. So if, uh, you're, uh, that's when you're running with V2H. This has the ability to do V2H and V2G. Yep. Right. And you can adjust that with your phone. With V2G, you're not just putting power on the grid, which most people think. Uh, V2G, it powers, uh, powers your house first, and any extra not being used goes back onto the grid. Where V2H only draws from the car what is being used from the house, but you have to be drawing more than 1.2 kilowatts. Yeah, that's really interesting. So if your house is pulling less than 1.2 kilowatts overnight, which most houses would, and you've got one of these, you could still use it, but you'd have to put the excess going up to 1.2 kilowatts back into the grid. Back into the grid, which is uh, not a problem. There's power companies now that are paying a lot extra at night time now for feed-in tariff, up to 18 to 20 cents per kilowatt to feed in between six o'clock and nine o'clock at night at peak. So when, are you taking advantage of any of those? No, I'm pri uh, primarily using my car to discharge at peak between six o'clock and nine o'clock at night. Um, while you're cooking, you're running the air conditioner um, to warm the house at the moment. Summertime, you'd be chilling. Nine o'clock, we turn it off and, uh, and then turn the car off. In the morning, you want to have a, a little bit of power left um, to, to get to where you're going the next day. We don't use it every night. If we happen to be driving to Adelaide, which happens to be from here a uh, 170 kilometre round trip, we won't use the car over that particular night. Yep. yep. Because we need the power for the next morning. How much of the car battery do you generally drain at night? Uh, on average, uh, this time of year, we're draining about 20 kilowatts. 20 kilowatt hours overnight. Uh, so yeah. we're staying within uh, within the 80% of and 20% of low charge. We're only setting it um, between two and three kilowatts because that's all we're using. And with that, um, uh, you're not really degenerating the battery so much because you're not fast charging it and discharging it at 50 kilowatts an hour, which the Chatamo plug has the ability, and that really just um, degrades the battery over time. Yeah. Are you worried about degrading the battery faster because you're using it to power um, your uh, No, I, I'm not um, because uh, 
Nissan Leaf offer an eight year warranty on the battery and a five year warranty on the car. Nissan, using a wall box V2G converter, the warranty is covered. Yep. The battery of the car is covered using the system. Oh, that's excellent. Which is uh, fantastic by Nissan Australia. Really? And you are right, uh, if you're looking at purchasing a new car, having V2G capabilities in the future is something you can consider before purchasing purchasing your ne next electric car. Interestingly, cuts out all the Teslas at the moment. Tesla's great cars, but for some reason, they're refusing at the moment to enable V2G on them. So will it match the load of your house? Uh, easily. Even, um, we're a small winery, we do about 10 tonne of fruit a year. Um, right in the middle of vintage, we, we would not pull more than seven kilowatts. That's a, that's a lot of power. So if, if this complex is pulling, say, 5.2 kilowatts, will the wall bar box automatically pull 5.2 kilowatts from the battery, or do you have to set that? Uh, no, it, it can automatically uh, discharge 5.2 so kilowatts. Just like a normal home battery, it just yep. discharges what it needs to. Can we talk money? How much everything costs? Okay, uh, our Nissan Leaf cost um, on road $52,000, yep. and uh, the um, Quasar V2G converter cost uh, $10,000 plus GST, $11,000, yep. and cost about $1,500 to install but we had to run a lot of cables to get to my meter box, which is a long way away. Right. Uh, in installation could run anywhere from $800 to $2,000. Did you have trouble finding an installer that was happy to um, do one of these? Um, my um, uh, Luke Cartwright, a, a local electrician, he put in my two Tesla car charging stations five years ago, and Luke Cartwright was really up with this kind of technology. Uh, so Joseph, can you show me how it works? No problem. So, simply plug in the Chatamo plug. Yep. And as you see, it's set at about 25 uh, amps discharge. It's clicked in. It's now charging the car at, uh, I've, I've only got it set at eight, eight amps. So the electricity is now going from your solar from my through solar. the wall box and that's very into important. the Nissan. Um, uh, you can hear it, it's just kicked in. Just kicked in. And then basically, if you have a look at this, and um, we can wind that round to um, discharge. So the amps have just gone from positive to negative. Yep. So negative amps means the electricity is now flowing out of the car, or will out, be soon, and, uh, into your home. Into the home, yep. How much solar have you got on the, on the roofs here? Uh, so we have 33 kilowatts of solar, um, because that's the maximum you could have with three phase. Yep. Could this back, could this back up the house? If the power's off with SA Power Network, this unit will not work at all with the power off. But the new Quasar V2G2, the second generation of this, will have the capability of working when the power is off. And and they will they could be available in Australia in about a one to one and a half years. Hey, well, when, well done, Joseph, on being an absolute trailblazer because everyone. I speak to is interested in V2G and V2H, and well done for having the persistence yep. to work with SA Power Networks over three years to get permission to put this in so others can follow your lead. Well yep. done, mate. Uh, uh, thanks to Nissan Jet Charge for all the work they've done, and without question, and Wallbox, because this will be your game changer.